Welcome to our roundtable. Uh, for sure, the students provided the inspiration and the commitment to change for the March for Our Lives, but they had some help. They were not alone. Tonight, we have with us four adults who helped to organize the event, and uh, we're going to talk to them. And as always, we'd like to hear your comments and give you a chance to ask some questions of them. Our phone number and uh, email address will be on the screen from time to time. And as we're talking, you're going to be seeing some video and some photos that were taken uh, around the country, specifically in our area. And we'd like to thank Jim Desmond for contributing his uh, media to our event. So I'd like to introduce our panel. Actually, let them introduce. Kristen, I'd like to start with you. Sure. I'm Kristen Lemka. My kids are 9 and 11. They go to the Rhineneck schools. And I was one of a tribe of about 15 moms that helped get the March for Our Lives in Rhineneck going. Thank you. Barry? I'm Barry Graubart. I'm the co-lead of the Westchester Local Group for Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. I've got a daughter, Katie, who's a first-year student at Skidmore College. Jose? Jose Zelstra, um, mom in the Rhineneck community, three boys, age 7, 10, and 12, and worked with uh, Kristen to organize the March for Our Lives in the Rhineneck community. And last, a gentleman who needs no introduction, but I'll ask him to anyway. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Tom Murphy. I'm the mayor of the village of Mamaroneck. Uh, I have a uh, junior in uh, Mamaroneck High School and two kids who have graduated from Mamaroneck High School. Uh, the village of Mamaroneck was happy to provide some of the support and logistics for this wonderful event. You were there, were you not? I did march, yes. What's a couple of words that describe the experience for you? It, it, it was inspirational and it was you know, hopeful. And the, uh, the, the count was a little bit less than the 3,000 that we announced earlier, but still a sizable turnout for a community like ours. Were you surprised at that turnout, Kristen? You know, we hoped, but when we first planned this, we thought maybe we'd get a few hundred people. We thought, gosh, we hope we get about 500. So we were floored that we got as many people as we did. Even at 1,600, that's more students mm -hmm. than are enrolled in the entire Rhineck school system. So when you looked around, I don't know that I remember anything that big happening in this town, at least not like that, mm -hmm. where it was every family who I knew, every student who I knew showing up and really excited to be a part of it. And the signs that they carry were apropos. Was there an activity that led up to the march where people were making signs, or was it just done in each household? There was. We Each of the moms held a meeting every weekend, and then we did a couple of calls. So the first meeting was at my house, and Jose was there, and we had our kids downstairs making signs. And when you saw the signs, it really shows why we need to march. And even the fact that we're making kids march for their lives is warped in and of itself. But there was a sign, I think it was your son who wrote, you know, I just want to be safe in school. And another third grader wrote, don't shoot. And another kid wrote, you know, protect our kids. And you think, these are the kids that have grown up with lockdown drills. I mean, most of them were in preschool when Newtown happened. They've known no other way of life. Um, and it's heartbreaking and hopefully hopeful, as the mayor said. Were you surprised at all by the, the number oh, of people I, who completely, were involved? Completely, completely. Yeah. Like Kristen said, we, we thought we were going to get a couple hundred people. Um, you know, we started with a very small, fierce group of moms who really wanted to do something. Yeah. And, um, and it just kind of grew and through social media and through, we put a lot of signs out, you know, around the march and the mm -hmm. date and the time. Uh, flyers, and before you knew it, there were, you know, we thought, yeah, we're going to get four or five hundred people. And uh, when, we, when I showed up, I went to the city first to, to look at the march, and when I showed up and saw just the number of, of families out, uh, and it was a beautiful day, but they just kept on coming and coming. And we started in one school, at the high school, middle mm -hmm. school, and then walked to the, um, the lower school, and, and then, you know, the elementary school, and then we ended up in Florence Park where we all gathered around and heard from, from both moms um, mm -hmm. as well as some of the kids. So Very did, powerful. Did you have help from like a national organization like Moms Demand Action? We signed up on the Everytown um, page. We signed up for our march, but we had gotten going on Facebook before that. Um, we participated with it, but it was really a locally led effort. It was moms and kids posting up lawn signs and putting flyers up in every restaurant we go to. It helps to be a bad cook when you're asking permission <laughs> to put up flyers. I'm like restaurant royalty in this town. Barry, there were other marches. In White Plains, there were uh, thousands. 9,000 or so. And around the county? 
So uh, there were others in the county nationwide. We so Moms Demand Action partnered with the students here. What we did is we we wanted the students to organize, uh, but we knew that there was some you know it always takes a little cash. Uh, so we ended up there were 834 marches worldwide I believe that that uh, that submitted on our site. Uh, we provided uh, grants of up to five thousand dollars for each march, so that helped with a lot of the uh, orchestration. Um, but we ended up partnering, uh, I, I did a lot of work with the White Plains team mm -hmm. and that was fully student run. I think the thing I did more than anything else in the month leading up to the March was tell well-meaning adults, I'm thrilled that you have great ideas, I don't care. The, the students have mm -hmm. their, their committees, they're organizing, they ran with it. I, I will give, for those in the White Plains March, uh, Kelly Marks, uh, who's a White Plains High School senior, sort of organized it and pulled together a team. They did an amazing job. That was what inspired us more than anything. I think. So this was very much a, a student moment, a student movement, and, and the adults helped out. Uh, yeah, we, we took a back seat. Uh, someone asked, shouldn't we media train the students? I said, are you crazy? Are you listening to them? <laughs> we don't need to do this at all. They're, they're really, yeah. we, our job was to amplify their voice and get out of the way. As a matter of fact, I read a quote from, um, uh, in the New York Times, the woman who founded uh, Moms was quoted as saying, we want to give them the biggest megaphone that we can. Yep, absolutely. And that's what happened. Yep. All right. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about, even though what's in the headlines these days are, are the mass shootings, gun violence is, is more than that. Yes? Okay. We'll be right back after this. We're back with our roundtable discussion about March for Our Lives. As you know, uh, in uh, Rye Neck, just on, on the 24th, it attracted almost 2,000 people, as we have heard. And we're with some of the adult organizers who helped the students, inspired by the students, but helped them. And we've got an email question came in on the break. Uh, what can the local government do? This might be appropriate for you, Tom. What can the local government do to aid the change students are asking for? whether it's gun law restrictions or armed presence in schools? Well, I, I think that the local government uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of statutory authority in restricting guns. Uh, we, we provide uh, police protection as the schools uh, ask for. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't force ourselves upon the schools. Uh, but you know, we, we react very quickly, and I have every faith uh, in our police department during an emergency. But you know, the, the, what we have to provide is prevention. Uh, you know, the police are you know, a response. Uh, you know, if we're not getting the guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have guns, you know, then you know we're just putting band-aids on the real problem. And I think sure. what elected officials have to do is advocate and be open about their position on guns. And I think that you know, before you vote for anybody for school board, for a village board, for town board, for uh, state government or federal government, you should know their position on guns. And if they're not willing to tell you then that's an indicator of what their position is. What about applying uh, pressure to a higher up in the, in the government, at the, at the state level, for instance? Yeah, I, th I think that that's an important task of local government. I think, you know, uh, higher elected officials, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's actually an inverse of what you would think. Higher elected officials depend on the lower elected officials to help them get elected, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to get their people out. So, you know, you do have some say if, if you actually use it. You know, I, I, I would not help or support anybody who uh, w wasn't uh, you know, an advocate of you know, not, not taking all guns away and restrict, mm -hmm. but, but of gun control, sensible gun control, that you know, a lot of the uh, kids are advocating and you know, moms demand action are advocating. And, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, yeah. As, a, as a politician, do you think that the next vote is going to be a one-issue vote? No, but I think that it, it'll be uh, part of the game is mm -hmm. you know, where do you stand on this? And I think that generation of kids yeah, that's going to be their issue. And, and you know, I, I, as a father and as an elected official and as an American, what happened in Newtown and that we didn't do anything, we did absolutely nothing after that, was the biggest you know thing I'm ashamed of uh, about you know being in government is that we let those children get murdered and slaughtered and we didn't do anything to prevent it from happening again. Tom, can you talk a little bit about uh, gun violence outside of these these horrible mass killings? Sure, thanks, Mike. Um, so, 
you know, the mass shootings obviously get the media attention, and, and in this case, they've really gotten, you know, communities up in arms and, and, and moving. Um, but every single day in America, 96 people on average die of gun violence. Uh, and most of that is, you know, 60% of it are suicides, and that's the easy access to guns. And, and you look at it, um, LGBTQ teens are four times as likely to commit suicide as their cis peers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you can't, I got into this movement in part because a year after I graduated college, a, a classmate of mine who had lost his job and was, you know, feeling a little depressed, mm -hmm. um, reached into his father's desk drawer and took out a gun and took his own life. It's that easy access that really impacts people. The, the second biggest cause here is domestic violence. And, and we know that if there's a gun present in the home, a woman is five times as likely to die from a domestic violence uh, incident. So there are, and, and as, as uh, the mayor said, there are things the state can be doing. There's a bill that uh, has passed the state assembly called ERPO, the Extreme Risk Protection Order, which would empower you know, it's a red flag bill. We keep hearing about the mm -hmm. red flags in, 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 in Parkland, but it, it empowers law enforcement or family members to raise, uh, to petition the court to have a gun removed from someone who's a risk to themselves or others. Um, that bill has to pass. The Assembly has passed it. The governor supports it. Right now, the state Senate refuses to act on it. Uh, those are the bills we need to really save lives. So how do our viewers... Uh, supply that pressure? How do they get involved? Sure. So two things. If you're a student, the first thing I would ask is uh, we, we have launched, it was actually soft launch because it was supposed to launch in Q2, it was accelerated a bit by Parkland, but a group called Students Demand Action, which will be a sister organization, but it'll be student-driven, student-run, and that's middle school, high school, college, and you can just text the word STUDENTS to 64433. Um, to join, and, and it'll prompt you with a form. For those who aren't students, adults, and, and others, um, you can just text the word READY, R-E-A-D-Y, to 64433 and join Moms Demand Action. We have been growing leaps and bounds in Westchester. We have lots of opportunities for volunteers who want to get involved in legislation, in elections, in community outreach, and working with communities that are more impacted. You know, we, we all think that, you know, every, well, every community is impacted by gun violence. Yeah. When you look at domestic violence, when you look at suicide, but we know some communities are, are greater impact, and we're working uh, to to reach out to those communities and support what's working in, in there. And Mike, this is where I think people really need to understand the data. Most people who own a gun in their home <clears throat> think they're doing so to protect their family, and they should know a gun in the home is 20 times more likely to be used against you than it is in any situation of self-defense. And these family fire killings are the ones that don't necessarily get the media cycle. I always ask before my kids go out in a, over on a play date, I ask if there's an unlocked firearm in the home mm -hmm. because I know they're more likely to be harmed by that than they are a swimming pool or yeah. you know, the other things that we worry about. But of course, what the media report are, is the often shrill voice of the NRA, that mm -hmm. uh, if, you, <clears throat> if you attempt any kind of gun regulation, you're anti-Second Amendment and you're going to take all the guns away. You know, for 200 years, the court has interpreted the Second Amendment to be something that is not without limits. Mm -hmm. You know, even Justice Scalia, who was no progressive on the court, said in, in, in the 2008 decision that this is not without limits. You can place limits. I, you know, I would ask, who really wants, mm -hmm. you know, do you want domestic abusers to have guns? 95% uh, of NRA members say no. You know, the other 5%, I, I'd worry about, you know, are they the abusers? <laughs> um, you really need, you know, background checks. Why is it, why should people be able to go and buy a gun without following the rules if they buy, based on where they buy it? Could you, you know, drive a car without a license because you bought it from a different dealer? So these are common sense. Again, we're not for gun control. We're for common sense gun laws. And, and most of America, NRA members are not. The gun lobby is who the NRA represents. They're not representing, um, you know, American gun owners. At this, we're going to pause again, and when we come back, what's next? What can you do uh, besides uh, texting, as uh, Barry mentioned? Uh, there's a forum coming up, a candidates forum in New Rochelle. We'll tell you about it. We'll be right back. Thank 
you for being here. We're back with our roundtable, and we're talking about the March for <coughs> Our Lives, and we've got some panelists here who helped the students to organize for that march, uh, parents and a national organizer, and the mayor of the village of Mamaroneck. Who was there? I was. I was happy to be there. But it was, it was all the children. It was an amazing thing to watch. Yeah. Uh, so what's next? You, tell us about that forum. So speaking of the students, um, this, there is a group forming called Westchester Students Coalition Against Gun Violence. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, you can find them on Twitter at WSCAGV, Westchester Student Coalition Against Gun Violence. And they're working uh, to put together a candidate forum. As many of you know, we have a, uh, a special election coming mm -hmm. up for Senate District 37, uh, which was vacated uh, when George Latimer became county executive. So they've invited Shelley Mayer and Julie Killian to a forum, uh, not a debate, it's a candidate forum where students will ask questions. Uh, so they're, that group, if you follow them on Twitter, uh, they'll let you know how to get involved in that, but they're looking for volunteers right now to fill out a, a bunch of teams, and they're looking for all students across Westchester to participate at the event, which is at St. Trinity Paul, I'm sorry, Trinity St. Paul, Paul Church. Church in New Rochelle, uh, to come to that on, on April 9th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, come to it and, and bring your questions, and they'll be accepting questions in advance via social media. Uh, but it's a great, as, as, as Tom Murphy said, mm -hmm. get the candidates on record ask them tough questions, get their positions out there, find out what they're going to do. Again, the Senate, this is a Senate race. We can't get ERPO passed because of the Senate. Let's find out where they stand. Yeah. You'll see, and, and Kristen, uh, you've got a new Facebook uh, group, have you not? I believe it's called um, Rynek for Sensible and Safe Gun Policy. Yes. We linked their page with our March for Our Lives page, so this can become an ongoing fight for kids' lives, not just a one-day march. So what are the next steps in this fight? Well, I think you? what's important is, you know, and what I think has lacked in the past is that something like this, like a mass shooting, is newsworthy. And people talk about it for a few days, maybe a week, maximum two weeks, and then they're on to another issue. And I think through, you know, some of the work that you're doing and also the Facebook, we need to keep this issue alive. We need to keep it in front and center. We don't want to, you know, get on another topic and forget about it. We all have busy lives, but as long as we have to keep the conversation going through social media and through partnering with organizations, I think this issue can stay alive, you know, outside of just the voting, which is, which is of course, very important. I, a viewer who I think who was thinking along those very same lines asked a question, how do you plan on keeping the momentum moving forward after the national news cycle changes? And as you say, there are strategies. So what can people in Rynek, the Maranek Larchmont do uh, join the Facebook group? I would join the Facebook group. I would say vote, 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 vote. Mm -hmm. and, and the mayor's right. This has to become an issue that people will vote on, not just students, but the parents of students as well. Do not contribute money. Do not vote for a candidate that does not articulate a common sense mm -hmm. gun safety policy. And this needs to become a pivotal issue. And it's starting to. It used to be your NRA mm -hmm. rating was a badge. Mm -hmm. That's changing, and it's changed mm -hmm. in several state elections. It changed in Virginia, and hopefully that continues to be something that... And even Florida, which, exactly. which is, I mean, they've got the, uh, what's that law where you can carry? Uh, we can oh, field carry. Oh, stand, your ground. Ground. Yeah. stand your ground. Oh, yeah. That one. They've got some new uh, gun legislation. <laughs> Florida and I think co uh, corporations are yes. getting behind this as well, and I think that's, that's really change. key, because when you look at Dix and Walmart and Delta Airlines, I think they've they've had enough and they're not giving any special concessions and anymore. Starbucks and in that's the, I think one of the yeah Starbucks one of the has ways. done that in, in town in communities where you're allowed to carry they say please don't carry here. We saw in Texas, Texas uh, where they put in their open carry law mm -hmm. and there was a group of volunteers from Moms Demand who went around the, the law said if you don't want someone to carry on your premises you need to post this language and it was like this thousand word long thing right because I didn't want people to do it there was a group of moms demand volunteers who put together a graphic design sign that had all the language but still looked pretty they made thousands of copies and they went store to store to store there was a blog post from the NRA blog from Texas saying open carry or concealed carry in Texas is a failure and they they attributed it to all the stores that were preventing it so oh, we yeah. can pressure Put economic a pressure. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, is there anything we've left out that needs to be um, emphasized, announced, proclaimed? No, I think one of the most inspiring things that came out of the March for Our Lives was kids really learned they have a voice yes. and their voice matters. 
And whether it's this issue or any issue, them learning to stand up for themselves and speak up for themselves will be maybe the most lasting thing that comes out of it. And how amazingly articulate and poised those children were. Unbelievable. On, on every level. Yeah. I have a, a lot of faith in the next generation. Mm -hmm. So that just, you know, just from the, the students in Parkland and some of the kids that we saw, I just yeah, feel like the, the future is theirs and we need to support that. It was a letter to the New York Times I found when I was studying up for this and uh, the letter writer, if I can quote her a little bit, said, children will lead us. It's their movement, their moment, their future. They will show us how to come together, to be inclusive, to fight for change. They will vote, they will run, they will lead. And she ended her letter by saying America is in good hands. You know, it's sad you see some of the uh, uh, supporters of the NRA trying to demonize these children. Uh, you know, and just you know, with, with false accusations and memes that were, you know, it just, it shows you, you know, what they'll do. You know, they're, they're willing to attack children who are just exercising their First Amendment rights to keep the money flowing to the I think right. that maybe that's a sign that they've run out of arguments. They're yes. desperate. That it's a sign of right. desperation. And we saw Laura, if, if, you're yep. make, if you're making fun of kids whose friends were exactly. murdered in front of them, you're losing. Yeah, right. We saw Laura Ingram today <laughs> sort of make, you know, after her attacking one of the teens from Parkland, backed off suddenly saying, in the spirit of religion, I think the religion she got with several advertisers agreed not <laughs> yeah. to run ads on her show because of this. So again, it's... it's David it, Hogg's post. Uh, yeah, 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 it's putting all that pressure that's, on. And just, that's her main religion, is the advertisers. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I, will, I, will, I will just echo what others have said about, we, you know, we put together our five-point, really subtle plan named Throw Them Out. <laughs> and, and it's step one is, you know, is, is make sure you become a single-issue voter. And it doesn't mean you ignore all the other votes, but in the past, I think... Many people on this side of the aisle have potentially said, we'll forgive the gun vote if you're good on these others. You can't. It, it's, it has to be one of the key issues. The second thing is uh, get, you know, find, follow the money, the NRA money. Get your friends to vote. Put the candidates on the record. And if you can't find a candidate who's got your, who's going to back your, your opinions, run for office. We have over 400 Moms Demand Action volunteers around the country running for office this year who are on the ballot already. So. Uh, what about uh, donating to uh, organizations, uh, candidates? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's. I would say right now, focus on, on the candidates. Work mm -hmm. on on local elections. There's a lot. You know, again, Senate District 37. There's an election going on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure either candidate would appreciate your money. So go find where they stand on the issues that you that matter to you, uh, and support them. We will have a lot of elections in, in November. Right now, Congress until November will not move on these issues. We've seen that. The action is in the state houses, and there's a big, you know, big opportunity to influence it with the special election, which, which could tip uh, the balance in, in the state Senate. With that, we've got to wrap up tonight's discussion. I thank you so much for coming and talking, and you're welcome to come back again, and we can address this issue and give more information to the community that wants to get involved in, and see the kind of change that kids want. And don't go away. We'll be right back with more of The Local Live. Mm -hmm.